Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back. Katya here and I am absolutely thrilled to announce something big for 2025. It is the Reading the Globe Fiction 2025 read along, our deep dive into the world of translated and global fiction where each month we'll explore a different book bringing voices from around the world to our shelves. And I'm even more excited to tell you that I am co-hosting this with the wonderful Roz from Scally Dandling about the books. Now, if you don't know Roz, you're in for a treat. And I have a feeling most of you do already know her. She's not only a, a co-host of Victober, but brings a unique perspective to all her reads with a passion for global and indie press fiction from some of my favorite publishers like Tilted Access, Charco Press and Jacaranda Books and more. So, absolutely really insightful about translated and global fiction. Now, what can you expect from reading the Globe Fiction 2025? Well, fiction for sure. And we have handpicked 12 books that celebrate stories crossing borders, covering everything from love and memory to resilience and survival. Now, if you missed the update on my community tab, Roz and I met for the first time in that um, UK booktuber meetup in York, which was wonderful. Um, I was absolutely shattered by the end of that day, though, because I traveled three and a half hours up, three and a half hours back. And as I was traveling up, I had a delay on one of my trains. So my switch over from one platform to another was four minutes and um, on my dodgy knee. But I made it with seconds to spare. And yeah, it was just all so worth it. So when we met in York, we had a look over the list and we even had Bob the Booker look it over. Um, so there was one book that we weren't sure about and he helped us make a decision. Thankfully, he didn't charge a consultation fee either and got us even more hyped because half of the books he had read and really enjoyed. So what are these books? What do we have lined up? Let's dive right in. We begin January with Clean by Chilean author Alia Trabuco Saran, translated by Sophie Hughes. This sounds really good. Through the eyes of a perceptive maid, Clean unravels the secrets of a wealthy family on the brink of collapse. A sharp exploration of power, class and the tensions within. February. Beyond the Door of No Return by French author and academic David Diop, uh, translated by Sam Taylor. And having read and loved Diop's Visceral at Night, All Blood is Black, I'm really excited for this. It sounds like a profound narrative on love, colonialism and resilience as a man journeys from France to Senegal, seeking answers about a woman lost to him. March, we have We Do Not Part by Korean author Han Kang, translated by E. Ye Won and Paige Ania Morris. And you'll know that I'm a huge fan of Kang's from my reviews of the White Book and Greek Lessons. But how could we not put Han Kang on here after she has won this year's Nobel Prize in Literature and sold out all of her uh, backlist books, not only in her native South Korea, but in a lot of other countries. And even here, there's a lot of books that are currently um, unavailable at some of the booksellers. So she has had a whirlwind um, of activity, everyone interested in in her writing, and rightly so. Um, I, this year, gave away The Vegetarian without reading it, and I don't think I have missed anything from not reading that one because it doesn't feel like my sort of book, but the books that do sound good to me from her that I've read, I have really loved, and this is one of them, one of the ones that sounds really good, so I've got high hopes. Uh, we Do Not Part is described as a haunting exploration of memory and connection and trauma, mostly on Jeju Island, and deals with the harrowing events that took place there 75 years ago. So it is going to be a heavy read. I'm sort of anticipating that it will leave me feeling a little bit drained in the way that um, Lisa sees the Island of Sea Women did, which is set around uh, that time as well, um, and looks back on the um, massacre that took place. But it was such a worthwhile read, and I feel that this is going to be the case with this book. So fingers crossed. And of course, there is no um, shortage of reasons to read Han Kang. 
in 2025. So April, we have A Sunny Place for Shady People by Argentine journalist and author Mariana Enriquez, translated by Megan McDowell. This is um, sounding like a thrilling dark delve into Buenos Aires' underbelly, exploring the city's secrets and shadows. And then in May, we have Two Trees Make a Forest by uh, British-Canadian author Jessica J. Lee, exploring memory, migration, and nature as Lee journeys through Taiwan, uncovering family roots and landscapes. And Roz um, reminded me that this is actually timely for May because it would fit in with a lot of people who are doing Springathon as well. Just let Milo in. <laughs> So then in June, we have The Third Love by Japanese author Hiromi Kawakami, translated by Ted Goosen. And the story follows Riko, a 21st century Japanese woman, wife, mother and lover who examines her past and present to consider what she wants for her future. An intimate look at love, identity and longing set in modern Japan. July, Standing Heavy by Ivorian author, journalist, editor-in-chief of a satirical economic newspaper in the Ivory Coast, and a screenwriter, so very talented, multifaceted, Gao Zi, and I might be pronouncing his pen name wrong, but um, translated by Frank Wynne, a satirical glimpse into immigrant life in France through the eyes of West African workers, touching on themes of modern... Co consumerism, post-colonialism, resilience, and more. Now, this book was shortlisted for the International Booker last year and had a lot of love from booktubers, including Bob the Booker and Eric Carl Anderson. So I'm really excited for this. And um, Roz actually put it on my radar. August, Old Kiln by Chinese author Jia Pinghua, translated by Christopher Payne, Olivia Milbourne, and James Trapp. Set at the dawn of China's Cultural Revolution, the story follows an outsider called Ink Cap, young, um, grappling with identity and survival in a rural ceramics village. And then we're already into the last quarter of 2025 with September and the director by German author Daniel Kielmann, translated by Ross Benjamin. And this is about um, filmmaker G.W. Pabst as he flees Nazi Germany only to face new moral challenges in Hollywood. And it's sort of a cyclical journey that sounds really fascinating, um, exploring ambition, art and loyalty. And I loved Kielman's, um book, Till. It was so odd and yet so compelling. So I am really interested in revisiting this um, author and looking forward to it. October, we have Ido Souls by South Sudanese activist, former pharmacist and author Stella Gaetano, translated by Sawad Hussein. This is set in South Sudan and is a tale of survival as Ido navigates a life marked by conflict and displacement. Then in November, we have The Understory by Thai author Sane Sangsuk, translated by Moi Pupuksakol. Said to be a powerful and poetic look at survival and nature as a young boy faces life in the wild. And it's told from the perspective of a 93-year-old abbot as he regales um, these children with stories of his past, or, well, his audience with stories of his past. I'm not familiar with the author, but I am familiar with the translator who did a fantastic job in translating Thai fiction for Tilted Access Press into English and so I'm really looking forward to this too. I'm looking forward to all of them. So I'll keep saying that. And finally, we get to December with The Wind Knows My Name by Chilean author um, Isabel Allende and translated by Francis Riddle. An intertwining of uh, two narratives. So dual narrative, Samuel Adler's Escape from Nazi-Occupied Austria and Anita Diaz's Journey from El Salvador exploring resilience and the courage to dream even in separation. And I do love Isabella Lende's writing, and I haven't read her in a very long time. 
So those are the 12. It is always tricky picking books. And I'm aware that there are so many worthy reads out there. Some that you might be thinking, oh, I'm really surprised that they haven't put that on there. But I hope you feel as excited about these ones as we do. And you do have the opportunity to shape the future of this read along. So why join Reading the Globe Fiction 2025? Join us to read stories that might challenge, inspire, and offer new ways of seeing the world. Celebrate works in translation since 11 out of these 12 books are translated. The only exception being the May book. Two is it May or is it June? May. <laughs> Two trees make a forest. Um, so yeah, 12 books. 11 of them translated, and that means opening doors to voices from different languages and cultures. We have the opportunity now to enjoy these stories in the English language, and that's, you know, such a pleasure. Community discussions will have dedicated chats on my Discord, followed by live show wrap-ups um, at the end of each book, and we'll alternate those live shows between Roz's channel and mine, so make sure you subscribe to both our channels. Then, you have that opportunity to shape the future of the read-along because at the end of 2025, we'll host a poll where you can help decide what's going to be on the 2026 lineup. And I know a lot of people are thinking, Katya, I can't believe you're talking about 2025, let alone now 2026 as well. But that's the way I am. I just like to sketch out these roadmaps in my mind. And I just hope you'll join us on this journey. So are you ready to broaden your reading world, make new book buddies and um, celebrate the beauty of global fiction with us. Drop a comment below if any of these titles catch your eye um, and don't forget to subscribe. I think I might have already said that to both our channels anyway. Remember to use hashtag reading the globe fiction 2025 on your TBRs, wrap up videos or Instagram posts and that will help us find your content. I have a Discord link in the video description and it won't expire thanks to Roz because I was like, Roz, I've got this link, but I think it expires um, first week of November. And she's like, oh, they've updated it. And you can actually have a long lasting, non-expiring link to share with people. So thanks, Roz. <laughs> so click that link and you'll get into the Discord. Um, it will be quiet at first because we're kicking everything off in 2025 but it will be very active in 2025. Let's make that 2025 a year of connection, discovery, and unforgettable stories. Thanks so much for tuning in. And um, if you're subscribed, remember that selecting the notification bell on channels, make sure that you can um, see all their latest updates. So of course, seeing um, my latest updates by clicking the notification bell. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, take care and see you in the next one.